This lesson builds upon the last lesson, in which we added electrons one at a time to atoms in order to write out their electron configurations. In this lesson, we'll zoom way out and see how the S, P, D, and F subshells lead to the S, P, D, and F blocks of the periodic table. We'll use the table to write the electron configurations of neutral atoms and ions. In section 6.8, we built the periodic table by adding single electrons to the lowest available energy level. We first added two electrons to the 1s subshell to make the first two elements on the periodic table. The next energy levels to be filled were the 2s and the 2p, which fit eight total electrons. The second row of the table is thus eight elements wide. Next, we fill the 3s and the 3p subshells, which also fit eight total electrons, making the third row of the table eight elements wide as well. Then we filled the 4s, 3d, and 4p subshells. The introduction of the d subshell has space for 10 more electrons, making the table 18 elements wide at this point. Then we filled the 5s, 4d, and 5p subshells, which also contain 18 elements. Next, we filled the 6s, the 4f, the 5d, and the 6p subshells. The introduction of the f subshell adds four extra elements to our table, making the table 32 elements wide at its widest point. Lastly, we filled the 7s, 5f, 6d, and 7p subshells. These are the heaviest elements discovered and the last elements on the table. This gives names to certain blocks of the periodic table based on which subshell is being filled. It also elegantly reveals the underlying reason why the table is shaped like it is. Notice that we often put the F block underneath the table just to make it a little less wide and save space. These electron configurations also explain the periodicity of the table because elements from the same column, the same family, have similar electron configurations. For example, the alkali metals all have a single electron in their outer S subshell. These, all, these metals all like to lose that electron and form one plus ions. On the other end of the table are the noble gases, which have full S and P subshells. This electron configurations makes these elements very stable and unreactive. In general, the outermost S and P electrons determine a chemical's reactivity. We give these electrons a special name, the valence electrons. However, many of the transition metals will use their D shell electrons during reactions. So the chemical properties of the D block are not as easy to predict as the main group elements. The main group elements can have a maximum of eight valence electrons since this is the number of electrons which fit into the S and P subshells. In general, elements try to obtain eight valence electrons during reactions. The number of valence electrons increases as we go left to right across the table. And the number of valence electrons also explains the ion charges of the elements. Elements in the first three columns will lose their outermost electrons to become cations. Elements in the fourth column are right in the middle. They can either lose four electrons or gain four electrons, and thus they form plus four or minus four ions. Elements in columns five through seven gain enough electrons to have eight valence electrons, giving these ions a negative charge. And the noble gases are already happy with eight valence electrons, so they don't form ions or react at all. When we form an ion, we add or remove electrons, which also changes the element's electron configuration. In general, elements want to have the same electron configuration as the nearest noble gas. For example, neutral lithium has the electron configuration 1s2, 2s1. It loses its outermost electron to form a 1 plus ion with electron configuration 1s2. Helium, the nearest noble gas to lithium, 
also has an electron configuration of 1s2. We say that lithium ion is isoelectronic with helium. Another example, fluorine has electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p5. Fluorine is a halogen, so it gains an electron to become a minus one ion with electron configuration 1s2, 2s2, 2p6. The fluoride ion is isoelectronic with neon, its nearest noble gas neighbor. When elements lose electrons to form cations, the S and the P electrons are lost before any D electrons are removed. Take gallium, for example. Neutral gallium has 31 electrons with the condensed electron configuration of argon, 4s2, 3d10, 4p1. I've highlighted its valence electrons in blue. Note that we do not consider the D electrons to be valence electrons. Gallium forms three plus ions by losing its outermost S and P electrons. It does not lose its D shell electrons, which gives gallium the condensed electron configuration argon 3D10. All right, time for a practice problem. Use electron configurations to explain why zinc always forms a two plus ion. Pause the video and write the electron configuration for zinc and zinc two plus. Here's the solution. First, I'll show the electron configuration of neutral zinc. Then remember, elements lose their S and P electrons before they lose their D electrons. So zinc has two valence electrons, both of which are in the 4s subshell. It loses those two electrons to form a two plus ion. Zinc is quite happy with this electron configuration because all of its subshells in level three are full. All the elements in zinc's column have a full D subshell, which explains why they always form two plus ions. In fact, they don't have multiple oxidation states like many of the other transition metals. So many chemists do not consider zinc's family to be within the transition metals. On the subject of transition metals, their electron configurations are not as straightforward to predict as the main group elements, and you won't be expected to know them on a test. I'd like to point out two interesting phenomena though. First, having a D shell which is half full often grants extra stability. So the elements chromium and molybdenum both steal an electron from their S subshell so that they have five electrons in their D subshell. Also, having a completely full D subshell grants extra stability. Copper, palladium, silver, and gold all steal electrons from their S subshell to completely fulfill their D subshell. You may recognize these elements as the coinage metals because they have extra chemical stability due to having a full D subshell. This also explains why transition metals can have multiple oxidation states. Take iron, for example. We would conventionally think of iron as having two valence electrons, which I've highlighted in blue. So iron forms a two plus ion regularly when it loses those two S electrons. But iron also forms a three plus ion when it loses a 3D electron, giving it a half full D shell. 